Cooking a lamb stew is a delightful idea. Imagine this, I have my light, my fan, I've got my cooker, I'm charging my laptop, I'm charging my phone. This is definitely getting you in the right kind of direction, but we have more that might come across as being a bit of a wrong way of doing it, but in reality, this is what will happen most places. So instead of hacking the system open because you're trying to get past some exotic connector, you actually can just connect straight. We offer everything here. We have data safety, we have large language model integration, we can cook food, we can provide you with energy. It's all in 12 volts, but at least you can do things like charge your phones, you can charge your laptops, you can run your lamp, you can run your fans. I would like to know how to cook a stew. I have a bit of lamb meat here and some vegetables. What should I do? Hello, my name is Mark and I'm the CTO from Off Grid Europe. Off Grid Europe has electrified a few hundred villages in Senegal. We've been working in the renewable energy scene for about 15 years now. And one of the next products we're about to introduce right now is the solar home system. And I'm sitting with that here at my desk. I came to work this morning and I thought I'm a bit hungry and we have a little rice cooker, so I hooked that up to the solar home system. I stuck a bit of goulash in there, a bit of frozen vegetables, and this has been sitting here simmering away with some peanut butter. <laughs> if you think of it, a chili and some salt. And it's looking quite nice right now. Ow, it's warm. Um, there we go. So this is a little stew that I'm making for myself for lunch. Um, quite excited about this. We're smelling up the entire office right now, which is making me slightly unpopular. One of my favorite things about working in the villages is actually the food. And there's some other videos where you can see I'm reviewing some food that I've eaten there. And, and the process is from what I've seen is that you take a lot of different ingredients, you put them into a pot, so that's your meats first, and then you have your, you know, just like a standard stew kind of thing. I'm not a cook. but put everything into a pot and you leave it there for a few hours and then you uh, cook some rice and then you have a meal and and people would only eat maybe once or twice a day but that meal is absolutely amazing with super nice chili and super nice for flavor and everything i'm replicating that here with a little cooker that i have here at my desk but you can also get the solar system with a bigger cooker and that's exactly what you need so this is running off the solar home system right now and it's running in real time and it's running live. Not only have I got this solar home system right now making my lunch, but it is actually charging my laptop right now. Charging, it's got a little charging indicator up here in the corner and it's charging my mobile phone. In fact, it charges from zero. So it's cooking, it's charging my laptop and it's charging my phone and also it's connected to a lamp and also it could be connected to a fan I have up here. Now this fan is not connected, but I'm gonna connect it now and I'm gonna demonstrate what type of connector system we actually chose to use for our system because we didn't use a plug. We decided to use a much simpler system where you can effectively just put the cable straight onto a lug and crimp them in and that might come across as being a bit of a wrong way of doing it but in reality this is what will happen most places so instead of hacking the system open because you're trying to get past some exotic connector you actually can just connect straight to the terminals here we are providing a plug for this which is specific for this but this is how it probably could be used in many cases so I'm gonna just, this is only 12 volt by the way, so this is only also completely safe to touch. Can't hurt yourself on this. I'm gonna put this in there, this up behind here and jam it in. And now I have a fan, just like that. Everything's running now. Fan, the cooker, the whole lot is all running. The solar home system has a software which is called the IOTEM Foundation. The IOTEM Foundation also comes with this really straightforward and excellent software you can see right now running here. This is this is the live software and here you can see consumption. So I'm going to turn on the, the, uh, the cooker here and that means that the energy consumption is going to shoot up. And if I charge in my other parts, I will carry on increasing or decreasing. And this is both on a local system. So if you have a mobile phone or a laptop like I do here, you can look into your solar home system and see what your status is, you know, of um, the actual system with like data. But you can also see this in the cloud and the cloud is what's protected by the IOTM Foundation. So we believe that really for our marketplace, 
We offer everything here. We have data safety, we have large language model integration, we can cook food, we can provide you with energy. It's all in 12 volts, but at least you can do things like charge your phones, you can charge your laptops, you can run your lamps, you can run your fans. So actually most things that you need in this kind of environment. The system is extremely rugged, built for durability. It's heat tolerant, it's got big heat scent in the back of it. So really this product's very much designed for the marketplace. It can be manufactured locally, which of course we're gonna be doing in the Lambe, we're looking forward to this. I've got here for my colleague a little pay-as-you-go token. This is a seven-day voucher for power. So, I mean, this is just written down on a piece of paper, but that's how this works because the system can operate offline. The system um, is not right now providing any power. I'm going to go into the menu and I'm going to enter a token and I'm going to enter this six. Okay. Now it's unlocked and now I have seven days worth of operation. That's right here, or six days, because it's six days plus 23 hours of time to use this. And now I can go in here and carry on cooking my stew. <laughs> and I can carry on charging my battery on my laptop. With the token system means that you can make a payment system for people who are offline and you can provide them with a solution for remote power effectively. Imagine this, I have my light, my fan, I've got my cooker, I'm charging my laptop, I'm charging my phone. This is definitely getting you in the right kind of direction, but we have more because this system can also do something else incredibly cool because we have connected it to a large language model. And I'm gonna show you that right now. I'm just gonna enable it here. AI assistant enabled, and then I can talk to it right here. Hello? Mini, the solar home system assistant. I'm here to help you manage and monitor your solar energy system. How can I assist you today? I would like to know how to cook a stew. I have a bit of lamb meat here and some vegetables. What should I do? Cooking a lamb stew is a delightful idea. Here's a simple way to make a delicious lamb stew. <laughs> One, ingredients. <laughs> lamb meat cut into cubes. Potatoes, carrots, onions, All right. garlic, celery. Sorry optional. to interrupt you here. Tomato. That's pretty cool, hey? This system can actually use a large language model and gives the user access to a world wide web of information curated by a large language model. So this can provide education and healthcare and all sorts of different things like that. So really in many ways, the solar home system is completely novel. It's revolutionary. It is powered to be able to deal with the needs for the local population. It can be manufactured locally. We've designed it to be manufactured locally. It's serviceable. You can take it apart and put it back together again if you're a trained um, installer. It's the product for the future for solar home systems. And we are setting the standard showing the consumption and the production. So the green one is the production and the yellow one is consumption. So when I turn off the, um, if I turn off the fan and I turn off the light, now you can see consumption is dropping. I'm now gonna unplug my phone. I'm gonna unplug plug my laptop and then I'm gonna turn off the stove there and now we're gonna be down to there we go now the consumption is around 30 watts and I think the reason for that is because yeah the LLM is still running this system is not a 230 volt appliance, okay? 230 volt means that you need to have an inverter in there and inverters are notorious for breaking, especially small ones. It will be coming in the future, but we don't feel we have made anything that can last for 10 years, so this is not what it is. If you want to have 12 volts um, made into 230 volts, you can take a standard inverter and you can hook it up to the outputs, um, which we right now have running our cooker. In this case, again, like this is like a quick hack here. But this is, this is the normal option that you have for this. And this will power up the inverter and this effectively powers up the fan. So if you want to have 230 volt, then you need to have an inverter. I want to emphasize, this is not a safe operation to be using, but this is 12 volts, so you can't, you know, you can't get electrocuted here. If you were to short this out one way or another, like I'm going to demonstrate right now, you can just reset the system. See, now I've shorted out the system and I'm just simply going to go into the menu here. We're going to settings. I'm going to BMS reset and it's going to turn back on again. This kind of feature of being able to actually short out your 12 volt power and then have it come back again is quite something special. Normally that would blow a fuse or break some kind of uh, device inside your PCB. In our case, it literally just causes and it turns the power off and you can turn it back on again. And this is really what the system is all about. It's about 
creating a system which people can use in the real world where they're using a piece of cable and where they accidentally short out things and so on. And if they do that, it's not, it won't cause a fire, it causes a small spark. That small spark then triggers the, um, the, the short circuit protection. You actually, you then have to go and reset it and then hopefully you won't have to short. You can see, I'm short out one more time here. And then one more time, I've again lost my power. That is, that is a consequence of setting it up wrong is that you simply, it just turns off and then you just reset it. And it's back on again.